Welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for those who have been following along on my journey. Thank you to those that have been really reaching out and showing me so much love and support, even people that I do not know. I do not take it for granted. I'm really, really grateful because this is quite difficult, which I've said quite a few times for me to come out here, but I believe um, my story is helping, even if it's just one person, to recognize the signs and, and the traits of a narcissistic relationship, which is really my objective. So today I'm going to discuss and talk about the importance of my support system and how this really went a long way in regards to me breaking out and coming out of the narcissistic marriage I found myself in. If you're new and you're wondering what am I talking about, I am sharing my journey on how I married a Christian narcissist. I have spoken quite a bit on different parts of the relationship in order to help people to recognize what narcissistic abuse looks like. Um, if you haven't seen, check my videos. I'll post the first video up here. You can click the link above, which is about how I married um, the Christian narcissist, the initial attraction, how did I find myself there? I also have spoken about the red flags, which is so, so important. And is the key element that I am trying to really bring about you know, I just want people to have that awareness of what to look out for. Um, I've spoken about the manipulative tactics and how my faith was used against me. And I've talked about the impact on my mental health. And, you know, that is the most important part as well, because sadly, domestic violent relationships, unfortunately, can lead to mental health issues. It can lead to many sicknesses and diseases because obviously the person is under an undue amount of stress and you know sadly these can even lead to suicide and there's so many cases and my story particularly resonates with the religious sector the church to be specific because I didn't just marry um, a narcissist I married one who was um, a religious one so I'm trying to shed light that you know when you least the places that you'd least expect to find such people um, is unfortunately where they are and I you know so that's why I'm sharing my journey so today I want to talk about the support system and how that really came in hand I'm so lucky that I have an amazing support system people that are related to me by family blood you know, my mom, my dad, my um, siblings, I have sisters, I have a brother, you know, I have aunties, mentors that have known me for so many years. And then I have people that I don't even know that just somehow God just sent them my way. Like God has been so good to me, you know, even in the marriage while I was going through hell, I just always had people that would step in and just show me love. There was always someone I could reach out to. I wasn't someone who really spoke about what I was going through in the marriage. And I think I touched on, on this in my last video that if you're seeing these traits, you must speak. You cannot keep silence because it's your support system that would really help you to recognize it even further. I will never forget there was one of my mentors who I'd always have like prayer sessions with and I don't take mentors lightly although I was burnt you know I spoke in my first video about how a pastor misled me into marrying um, the man I did marry um, by saying God said despite being you know hurt by that uh, man of God who I looked up to as a spiritual lead I did not allow that to prevent me from still ensuring that I have godly counsel around me, those that are more spiritually sound um, around me. It's in the Bible as well. I believe there's scriptures to basically back this up. The one that even comes to mind is, you know, the scripture that even says, let the older women in the church teach the younger ones. So I've not allowed, you know, that mistake or that incident to affect me from you know having godly leadership in my life so there was one of my prayer sessions with my mentor that I was able to ask you know after I've shared quite a bit and you know these are women that are not my age group so sometimes you're a bit like not sure whether you should open up to people that are within your age group for so many years I wasn't sure what I was in I had no idea I was in an abusive marriage first of all secondly I did not know I had married a man who was 
clearly meeting all the traits of a narcissist you know that was something I recognized after but during one of my sessions I do remember um, asking my mentor that listen you know a few of the problems I've been experiencing and I've just you know been going back and forth and you know at that point I was starting to cry for help like I knew I was in trouble I knew my marriage needed help and I was obviously praying and doing all the spiritual side of things but I had to now realize that this is beyond normal and I needed to kind of understand what my mind is telling me is this true so I do remember asking my mentor one fateful day during our prayer session which our prayers were always targeted at the marriage and praying for God to really come in and restore and just just, you know, heal and just do what I needed, which was have a healthy marriage and, you know, live a life that is normal and pleasing to the Lord. But one of the days I asked her, like, Ma, is this normal? Like some of the things I've explained in my previous videos that I've been going through, you know, because I really was under the impression that these were just typical issues that husband and wife have. Like I said, I had no idea it was abuse. So I was just thinking that's what it is. But when I asked her like, is this normal? Like, is this a typical matter that you find, especially those that can counsel other couples, they, you know, their pastors, their leads, they've counseled many couples. So they would have a rough idea of the sort of typical matters that present themselves in uh, marriages. So, I asked and I was like, is this normal what I'm going through? And I think when I had the response of no, this is not normal, of course, no marriage is perfect, but the things you have been going through, I'm sorry to say this, these things are not normal. They're not, this is not what you would expect in a Christian marriage, in a marriage that both of you profess to know the Lord Jesus. So that was another time where I was like, okay, so I began to realize, okay, what I'm going through, what my mind is telling me that this is not normal is actually true. There's a lady who lost her life. We all know she's a gospel artist. I believe her name was Ostinachi and she lost her life to domestic violence. Her husband killed her. Of course, her husband was also known to the church. And one of my mentors one day sent me the discussions that were had post her death where I think Nigeria really rose up at that time to really start talking about abuse, domestic abuse that takes place in the home. When I watched that video, which was a panel of, you know, psychologists, um, psychotherapists and all these different counsellors, all these different types of professionals alongside ministers of the gospel, you know, in terms of like ministers themselves, women of God, men of God coming together. There was like a panel and they had a discussion and it was so enlightening because if I had not seen that video, I would not have even recognized I was in an abusive marriage. As I watched that um, video, I was like, oh my gosh, my marriage is an abusive one. And I kid you not, prior to that, I just thought I was in a relationship that was just typical of ups and downs. That was as a result of having a support system. My support system really came in hand. As I've broken out of this um, toxic marriage, I have had several people that I have not even communicated with, but they had watched me from a distance. They had um, seen me maybe on social media or seen me out on the streets preaching with um, the man I married, seen, you know, you know, well, these days, social media is a tool that obviously people can relate with people, just what they see online. I've had people that obviously knew me when I went to church, the church I used to attend. What I want to pull out is people that I have not even had a conversation with have expressed how they had been praying for me, you know, realizing that I was most certainly in a toxic marriage. It was just so like shocking, I would say for me, as I've come out and I'm sharing my story to realize that so many people knew I was in a toxic marriage. I was in a narcissistic marriage to be so precise. And I was the last person to really recognize it. And I've said already in my previous videos that that was obviously because I was in a cycle which is commonly known as the trauma bond. You know, I was bonded by this trauma that I was experiencing and it's, you know, it, somehow it was just what I knew. If you know how much strength I had to gather, 
how much courage I've had to gather to actually come out of this marriage. It has, I've said it in my post before, it is a lot easier to stay, but staying is so damaging. Staying is so killing. Like you're literally dying a slow death. So what was it worth me really getting all the courage to get out, which was not easy? or stay and die a slow death. You know, those are the options I was presented with. So in regards to the support system, I believe I had so many people watching and praying. I had mentors, I had family that, you know, even though the man I married really did so much to destroy my family, to destroy my mom's support for me. You know, like there was just so much that happened that, you know, clearly the objective was to isolate me and just destroy the bond I had with my extended family however despite you know several arguments I got into with them to defend the man I married I got into several arguments even with my mom with my sisters you know really trying to let them know that listen this is my husband and I am willing to stand by him but you know despite them just knowing that I wasn't myself and despite them being offended severally based on the things I said to them and the things he had said to them when I was woken, when my eyes had opened up, they, you know, embraced me with open arms. They did not discourage me. They did not push me. While I was in it, they obviously was aware what I was going through, but they stood apart. They stood away. They did not try, you know, there's some families that will try to come and destroy that marriage, you know, and rightfully so. They, I believe they had a right to do that because no parents wants to see you in a marriage that can literally lead to your death. But respectfully, my family did not mediate until I opened up and I opened up right at the end. Like I said, in my last video, I mentioned when the red light bulb hit me and that was when I was like, oh my gosh, this guy that I've married, I will just keep going. I will pluck out my eyes, pluck out my nose and I still won't be appreciated. So, you know, the point I'm making is my family opened up with open arms the moment I was like, guys, this is what I'm going through. Like. And they just knew it and they didn't make me feel like we told you because I mean, I kid you not, my family and my friends, they did try to warn me, especially one of my very good friends, you know, who um, our relationship was destroyed as a result of the man I married, but somehow God is faithful and we rekindled six years later. We did miss a good six years of our lives together, but God has been faithful and has brought this woman back into my life. She warned me from the get-go and say, please don't marry this man. So I was warned, you know, I ignored the red flags. I said it in my previous video. But my point on this video is to just express how your support system is very, very important. And it's important you speak out. It's important you recognize the signs and the traits of an abusive relationship. I've been obviously speaking about the traits on what I've experienced, which are very much on the narcissistic spectrum, if that's even a way to describe it. Um, again, I've not spoken too much about what narcissism is, and I will speak more about what narcissistic abuse looks like. I will be more specific and general, but I have just been given a few snippets of my story, of my journey. I cannot tell it all. Of course, I've only given you about 10% of the hell I went through. Um, however, the key thing is I just want you all to understand that your support system is very important. It was very important for me and it's something that you are definitely going to need if you are in a relationship with someone who is presenting these red flags that I've spoken about. It's the people that love you, that care about you, that will help you and give you the boost and courage and most especially your faith in the Lord Jesus. I'm not going to even neglect that part. I think ultimately it's been God that has really helped me and contrary to what you'd probably receive and in the gaslighting of this person, especially if it's a religious person that, you know, you don't know God, God doesn't love you, God doesn't care about you, which was one of the attacks that was definitely used against me. 
I was severely attacked in my faith, you know, by this man I married. He constantly bashed me about, you know, my identity in Christ. And if it wasn't for the Lord, on my side i don't know where i would be but i know that the lord has been with me from the get-go he's never left me even though it might have felt like god how comes you know how did you allow me to but i will talk about the lessons i've learned in my next video because the lessons i've learned are really um to really highlight the errors that i went wrong and we can't blame god when you simply walk into the pits you saw the pit and you walked straight into it and that's essentially what i did so to um, just come to bring this video to a close you know I would definitely say that my support system people that God sent around me God sent me help and just my own personal relationship with God which is paramount and I think that is another thing I would like to emphasize you know as much as you might go through all this pain you know the Lord will bring you out of that pain and bring you into his promises for you. The weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Lord has said, but the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it might speak, though it tarries, wait for it. So while you're going through the fire, while you're in the valley, do not neglect God. Do not let him go. With all that I faced, I did not let God go. I knew, I mean, he's always been my backbone. He's always been everything to me. You know, a lot of a lot of people have also reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, I didn't even know you were going through all of this. And that's because I tried. I mean, deep down when you're unhappy and you're sad and you're miserable, it's hard to mask it. But I would say that I definitely held on to the Lord. I held on to him with, with all that I had, you know, even despite so much damage that was done by men of God that I looked up to, you know, it wasn't just the one man of God that I explained that, you know, led me to marry this man and said, God said, I also had other negative experiences with different men of God, not personally to me, but I have experienced it severally around me. So my point is, regardless of what I experienced, I did not let God go. I did not be like, oh, what has happened to me? I'm, you know, because I think that's the enemy's plan as well to just push you away from God's purpose for your life. So as much as the enemy came, God saw me through, God kept me, God was with me through the fire. I'm still going through it. You know, it's not been an easy journey, you know, but I am so confident that the Lord is on my side. You know, like that song that I believe Victoria Renze sang, which is called, I get back, you know, I can't sing, but you know, I definitely would confidently say that I have the backing of the Lord by my side. He loves me so much and you know, he has been with me and I know that he's standing with me and I know he's guiding me to, you know, the next level of wherever he wants to take me and I'm following him. You know, my eyes are fixed on him and that is definitely what one would need when one finds themselves not just in an abusive marriage but you need him regardless but most especially when you find yourself in an abusive relationship so i hope this video has helped you to realize the importance of your support system you know i hope you've been able to understand that your support system is very very key don't neglect them as much as the person who who is against you that you might be in this relationship with is trying to isolate you, you know, recognize that these are traits of an abusive relationship and you must run. I've said it in the past. If you recognize these signs and you're just dating the guy, you ain't, you ain't married him, run for your life. You know, if you haven't seen my videos, check them out. I feel, I think I've shared enough of my journey to show you all that. Listen, these are the things you need to look out for. I'm still going to talk about the lessons I've learned. I think the lessons I've learned is very, very important to address um, because that really does, you know, focus on what I did, how I just, you know, blindly entered into something that I should have not got into. Overall, my message is to empower somebody out there to realize that you're not alone if you have been through what I've been through. Sadly, there have been so many messages I've received that echo that I wasn't alone and you're not alone. And you know, that message of empowerment, hope and peace is what I want to bring you. You know, I've come out of it. I have the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. 
and I'm not encouraging anyone to leave their marriage but I'm letting you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Your situation will not bring you down but if you're definitely in that phase where you're courting, you're dating, please 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 look out for these signs you know they're more common than you would think um and you know hopefully the lessons i've learned will help also to inform a decision that you will make with regards to the man you do decide to walk down the aisle with and you know commit to forever so thank you once again for watching um i really appreciate if you haven't subscribed to my channel do subscribe and hit the notification button it really does help um because yeah i definitely want this message to get across to those that need to hear it thank you once again for watching and i'll see you on my next one bye